It would take billions upon billions upon billions, about 10 to the 600th, in fact, years, universes, however you want to see it, to get a single sonnet. That means you have to either have a universe that was 10 to the 600th times larger, or that there would be 10 to the 600th universes, parallel universes, one's going to make it. In other words, the likelihood of getting a sonnet, at least on this unit by, universe by chance, is zero. It will never happen by chance. So we have the origin of life that starts like this, and maybe it's by chance, that's what we're told, but it doesn't seem to work that way, because even if you think it's by chance, how the light beams figure out to send people to the moon, but they did. That life begins about 3.8 billion, 3.8 thousand million years ago. I'm using American terminology for the numbers. Life develops, not so rapidly in fact. It starts immediately, but remains single-celled for, for 3 billion years. For 3 billion years, life remains single-celled, and then out of the blue what comes what's called the Cambrian Explosion. This is Time Magazine, Scientific American talks about it also. In the terminology, the Big Bang of Animal Evolution. The Big Bang of animal evolution is quite amazing. Every, it's described uh, quite succinctly in Scientific American that every phylum that exists today came into being simultaneously. There are approximately 34 animal phyla. Every, all of those 34 appear in the, si si in the fossil record in a, in a strata called the Cambrian Explosion of which Darwin knew about. It wasn't dated. He just assumed that the, camp, the strata in which, in which every, every body type, in which every body type that exists today, not little people sleeping through lectures, no, but simply here's chordata. That's, uh, that's our first formation in our phylum. It's primitive fish. These are the first in insects, the trilobites. And they are mollusks and all, all together, all the 34, appear out of the blue 3.8 3 billion years ago. 3.6, 3.7 approximately, 3.8 billion years ago, water forms, life begins. For 3 billion years, life remains one cell. Then out of the blue, the Cambrian explosion produces this menagerie of life. These are drawings from the American Museum of, of Natural History that I showed in Time magazine. In that life, already are eyes. Every phylum that has eyes today appeared in the fossil record for the first time with eyes. Now that's quite amazing. So Darwin assumed that other fossils would be found that would show a difference. Well, other fossils have been found, it becomes worse and worse, constrained for these, these explosions of life, these punctuated li of life, and hence the journal Science, which is the leading overall peer-reviewed science journal in the United States, had an article in 1995 by uh, Robert Kerr said, did Darwin get it all right? Did Darwin get it all right? The subtitle was no, Darwin didn't get it all right that species appear in the fossil record with an amazingly undarwinian abruptness. What does it mean? It means we certainly don't understand what's going on, and it is interesting to see how a, one of the leaders, one of the leaders in, uh, in this understanding that life became by random reactions, how this person had the fortitude mentally to change his opinion. It's George Wald, Nobel Prize winner, professor of biology, Harvard University, wrote an extraordinarily interesting article called The Origin of Life. The Origin of Life, 1954, it was based on the thesis that, in fact, life could start by random reactions. Scientific American, The Origin of Life, George Wall. Wall becomes a Nobel Prize winner for discovering the role of vitamin E. I think it's E, maybe it's A. Yeah, beg your pardon. In, uh, in, uh, in visual, in the functioning of the retina. Here's what he had to say in 1954. However, remember, water, first life, water appears here, and in the 1950s and 60s, the first fossils were only a half a billion years ago. So there are like three billion years of blank space in there in which life was thought to have evolved. How, so he's talking about these three billion years for the random reactions. However improbable we regard the, invent, the event of the origin of life or any steps that it involves, given enough time, it will almost certainly happen at least once, and for life as we know it, once may be enough. Time is in fact the hero of the plot. Get at the hubris here. Time is in fact the hero of the plot. The time with which we have to deal is nearly two billion years. What we, what we regard as impossible in, the, in human experience is meaningless here. Given so much time, the impossible becomes the possible, the possible probable, the problem virtually certain. One is only to wait. Time itself performs the miracles. That's 1954. Comes 1970, another Harvard professor in 1975 and 76, Elsa Barshum, discovers that the oldest big fossils that we have, 
fossils that you can easily see do indeed, do indeed date only to about 600 million years, about a half a billion years ago. But the fossil record Barshun, Professor Barshun discovered goes back 3.8 billion years or 3.7 billion years. But it's one cell. Before the Cambrian, Cambrian explosion, there are close to 3 billion years, 3,000 million years of one-celled life. One-celled, 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 and then out of the blue, this explosion of life. And based on that, 25 years later, after 1954, Scientific American reprinted Wald's article with a retraction. It retracted the article, although stimulating this article probably represents one of the few times in his professional life was wrong. Can we really examine his main thesis and see, can we really form a biological cell by waiting for chance combinations of organic compounds? This would require more time than the universe might ever see if chance random combinations were the only driving force for life. Since 1979, you will not find in, reserve, in, in peer reviewed journals the fact that life started by random reactions. You will always find that a catalyst is required, a force is required, something is required in the environment that forces the life to occur. Wald, being intellectually honest and, and strong of character, in 1984, five years after the retraction and 30 years after his, his article about random reactions producing life, which led research off on a wild goose chase for about 25 years, Wald writes the following in an article published in the International Journal of Quantum Chemistry. The quantum phenomena has changed our understanding of the universe. And here, listen to his wording, it's exquisite. On his retraction, not of his article, but his previous thesis that the world was totally materialistic. This is the man that said time, in fact, performs the miracles. Notice that leaves something out. It has occurred to me lately, this is Wald, direct quote, in the International Journal of Quantum Chemistry, 1984. It has occurred to me lately, and I must confess with some shock at first to my scientific sensibilities. This is Wald speaking. And I must confess with some shock at first to my scientific sensibilities that the questions of the origin of consciousness in humans and the origin of life from non-living matter might both might be brought to some degree of congruence. This is with the assumption that mind, that mind, rather than emerging as a late outgrowth in the evolution of life, has in fact existed always as the matrix, the source and condition of the physical reality. That stuff of which physical reality is composed is mind stuff. It is mind that has composed the physical universe that breeds life and so eventually evolves creatures that know and create, create science and art and technology, these animals, humans. In them, the universe begins to know itself. Had Wald studied a bit of his heritage, you might have seen that in Kabbalah, was talking about it for the last 2,000 years. But quantum physics caught up with it also. James Jeans, the mathematician. There's a wide agreement which, on the physical side of the sciences, approaches unanimity, that the stream of knowledge is heading towards a non-mechanical reality that the universe begins to look more like a great thought than a great machine. Mind no longer appears to be an accidental intruder in the realm of matter. We are beginning to suspe suspect that we ought to hail mind as the creator and the governor of the realm of matter, not, of course, our individual minds, but the mind in which the atoms out of which the entire universe has grown exist as thoughts. Werner Heisenberg, Nobel laureate in quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics has placed the universe on a different footing. Quantum mechanics is part of, it's not some esoteric ob a theory on the corner in a shelf somewhere. Quantum mechanics allows your digital watch to work, allows your remote control that turn on your TV or opens your car to work. It allows your clock radio to work. It allows essentially from the time you get up to the time you go to bed, the theories and understanding of the quanta have changed electronics in your life. Werner Heisenberg, inherent difficulties in the materialist theory of existence, that everything is material, the material theory of existence have appeared very clearly in the development of the physics of the 20th century. This difficulty relates to the question as whether the smallest units of matter, such as atoms, of which we and all objects, from bacteria to galaxies, are composed, or ordinary, ordinary physical objects, whether they exist in the same way as flowers and stones, that you can touch them. Here the quantum theory has created a complete change in the situation. The smallest units of matter are not, in fact, physical objects. In the ordinary sense of the word, they are ideas. Erwin Schrodinger. No, winner of the Nobel Prize the year after Heisenberg, both again for quantum mechanics. So in brief, we do not belong to this material world that science constructs for us. 
We, the awareness of being ourselves, are not part of it. We're outside. We're only spectators. The reason why we believe that we are in it, that we belong